Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sangeeta Chaudhary and again I welcome you all to my lecture class. And in my today's class, I'm going to talk about a very important as well as a very interesting topic that is PNH or Paroxysmal Nocturnal Hemoglobinuria. PNH is one of the very important causes of hemolytic anemias. Uh, let's talk about PNH. It is an acquired and chronic condition. It is rare. But we do see PNH in our clinical practice and it consists of a classical triad which includes intravascular hemolysis, pencytopenia and increased risk or increased tendency of venous thrombosis. If we look at the pathophysiology of PNH, it is quite interesting. Normally what happens is that, suppose this is an RBC, normally there are certain membrane proteins like CD55 and CD59 which are anchored to the RBC surface membrane with the help of an anchored protein which is known as GPI. And because of the presence of CD55 and CD59 in the surface of RBC, these RBCs are quite resistant to the destruction by complement system. In the absence of CD59 and CD55, the RBCs get opsonized by the complements uh, like C3 and after opsonization, they are easily destroyed by the membrane attack complex. The membrane attack complex is the uh, final end product of the complement activation. Now what happens in PNH is that there is somatic mutation in the X-linked gene PIGA and because of the mutation in the PIGA there is reduced synthesis of the GPI anchored protein and because of the reduction in the GPI protein CD55 and CD59 cannot be anchored to the membrane of the RBC thereby resulting in increased susceptibility to complement mediated destruction leading to intravascular hemolysis and thereby leading to hemoglobinuria. If we talk about the clinical features, the patient may present with bloody urine. Suddenly the patient may come and say that uh, in the morning the patient had uh, passed blood in his urine. Okay, but most of the time patient presents with anemia in the clinical setup and when we try to evaluate the causes of anemia, then we find that the patient is having PNH. There may be pain abdomen. Pain abdomen is mostly due to the uh, venous thrombosis in the abdominal veins. The patient may present with Frank Bartcheri syndrome with pain abdomen and sudden onset ascites. And uh, in some cases, the PNH may turn into acute myeloid leukemia. Now, how to diagnose a case of PNH? In the blood, there will be anemia. Initially, the anemia is normocytic and normochromic. But as the patient keeps on losing blood and due to iron deficiency, the patient will have microcytic hypochromic anemia. That is in the uh, later stage. There will be increased uh, unconjugated bilirubin. The LDH will be increased. It will be increased in terms of thousands. There will be reduction or absence of haptoglobulin. Hem test uh, is a very important and very reliable test which can diagnose the disease. But it is rarely done in uh, laboratories. The gold standard or the most important diagnostic method is flow cytometry. Flow cytometry detects the absence of CD55 and CD59 in the uh, surface of the RBCs. If we examine the bone marrow, initially the bone marrow will be cellular and there will be marked erythroid hyperplasia. Okay, but in later stages of the disease, bone marrow will become hypocellular and uh, there will be features of a plastic anemia. There is uh, also something known as PNH and AA syndrome. That is the combination of 
peroxisomal nocturnal hemoglobinuria and aplastic anemia. Now uh, we have talked about the diagnosis. Now finally let's talk about the treatment of PNH. Okay, there is only curative treatment is allogenic bone marrow transplantation. And we can plan for bone marrow transplantation in young patients with severe PNH. Okay, and uh, those patients who have identical twins. Okay. The second treatment option is equilizumab. Equilizumab is a humanized monoclonal antibody and it is targeted against the C5 component of complement system. Once C5 is blocked, then there will be no formation of membrane attack complex. Membrane attack complex is the ultimate component of the complement cascade. So if there is no formation of membrane attack complex, there will be no destruction of RBCs. So there will be no intravascular hemolysis. The next treatment option is ATG that is anti-thymocyte globulin or cyclosporin. Okay. Either of these two drugs or a combination anti-thymocyte globulin and cyclosporin combination can be used in cases of PNHAA syndrome that is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria and the plastic anemia syndrome. These patients are also good candidates for bone marrow transplantation. If we talk about the supportive treatment, we can do red blood cell transfusion as and when needed. We can do folic acid supplementation. Iron supplementation should be done when the patient becomes iron deficient because of continuous or chronic hemolysis. And in certain cases, short-term corticosteroid, for example, prednisolone, can be used in cases of acute hemolytic condition. Okay. This completes the treatment for paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. I hope the class was useful and you liked it. Thank you.